The development process up to this point has primarily focused on hardware design and construction. In this video, however, I will shift the focus to a critical aspect of the project, signal processing. The goal is to convert the incoming brightness signals from the photodiodes to a distance measurement. First, let's take a closer look at the test setup. The device generates interference that causes variations in beam brightness at the output of the stabilization arm. Two photodiodes positioned side by side on the amplifier board detect these brightness changes and convert them into electrical signals. The board is mounted on top of the device with the photodiodes hanging into the beam, as can be seen by the casted shadows. The raw data produced by the photodiode amplifiers ranges from 0 to 3.3 volts and can be observed on an oscilloscope. In good agreement with theory, we get two sinusoidal signals when uniformly changing the arm length. Due to small wavefront errors, the photodiodes are picking up the signal with a phase shift. When plotting the two signals on an XY graph while altering the length of the interferometer arm again, an elliptical curve is formed. The shape and orientation of the ellipse depend on the amplitude and phase difference of the two signals. Consequently, when moving the photodiodes within the beam, these properties are altered and the shape changes. To aid development of the signal processing algorithm, a virtual model of the data source was implemented in Python. It generates two sine waves with different amplitudes offsets and phase shifts, while also adding noise to capture imperfections of the real system. The screen displays the output of this virtual interferometer in a similar XY plot format as previously used on the oscilloscope. If the screen is not cleared, the dot's path becomes more visible. The goal now is to retrieve the phase angle of the signal. To do this, the elliptical shape of the signal must be reconstructed. Once the ellipse parameters are known, we can transform the data onto a circle with a known center, from which the phase angle can be easily calculated using the arctangent function. Since the ellipse shape is totally unknown in the beginning, the devised algorithm starts with a two-step initialization process. First, samples are collected at roughly equal intervals, starting from an arbitrary point a circular zone is created. When the current point moves outside this zone, a new sample is recorded and the zone is shifted along. A second circular zone resets the process if the trajectory of the point changes direction before all samples are recorded. Once the point reaches the starting zone, the first part of the initialization is complete. With a set of equally spaced points on the ellipse, the center can now be estimated by calculating the centroid. Next, a fixed number of angular bends are created around the centroid similar to slices of a pie. When a measurement falls within a bin, its value is recorded there. After all bins are filled, the initialization is complete. During the runtime, bins are updated as described. At the same time, an affine transformation is continually optimized to transform the recorded points onto a circle. From there, the phase angle is easily computed. Let's look at the entire process again without interruption and with real data coming from the device. Finally, I would like to briefly discuss the implementation. The proposed algorithm was initially developed in Python and has already been ported to C++. Initial tests on a microcontroller have been successful. On the microcontroller, the algorithm is divided into two parts. The first runs within a timer interrupt, capturing data in real time and computing the current phase angle. The second runs in the main loop, handling the more computationally intensive optimization of the affine transform. That is it for today's video. 
In the next one, we will take a closer look at the wavelength stabilization process.